And tonight, we turn to King 5's Pat McReynolds, who just returned from northern Iraq three days ago. And Pat, you were at Camp Anaconda, where hundreds of Fort Lewis soldiers are stationed, and we understand that this is a place that has been attacked more than any other base in Iraq? That's right, Mimi, although most of those mortar attacks, most of those mortars miss, and less than 10 people at Camp Anaconda have actually been killed during the entire conflict. Unfortunately, though, as we saw today in Mosul, it only takes one direct hit, and insurgents know that dining tents are where you can inflict most loss of life. Now, the troops that we ate with in similar facilities told us while you do know that an attack is possible at any time, as you'll see in tonight's report, they have to put it out of their minds in order to get their jobs done. Welcome to Balad Air Base, the largest air base in all of the war. Right now, we are in a Black Hawk helicopter patrolling the perimeter about 40 miles north of Baghdad. More than 850 Air Force cargo planes land every month in Balad, offloading millions of pounds of cargo, while their sleeker, faster cousins guard their backs. The base also houses Camp Anaconda, where more than 20,000 Army soldiers stand at the ready to respond to threats outside the fence line. No spot here is safe. But the most dangerous area is the North Gate, where 1,400 Iraqis stream into the base every day looking for work. And the man in charge of this vulnerable choke point wears a familiar badge back home. It's very similar to being a King County deputy. <laughs> Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Captain Stan Sayo and Fort Lewis's 181st Support Battalion have the unenviable job of screening all of the Iraqi nationals coming through. Any one of them could be an insurgent carrying a bomb. All right. Yelm native Rachel Gorka stands at the farthest point, well beyond the wire. She is the initial contact with the dangerous unknown. Oh, every day I have to make sure I stay alert, you know. Looking for suspicious things, you know, that someone might be wearing or an extra puffy jacket or something. Just have to make sure I uh, always watch, always keep an eye out. Right next to her, Doug Peterson of Ording, who has already been knocked back by a mortar blast near the gate, but survived without a scratch. If I think about it too much, I'll probably end up going to mental health or something like that and see the psychiatrist. <laughs> the Iraqis say, inshallah, if God wills, and uh, that's pretty much the way you got to go about life here. Peterson has learned a lot from the men who join him in danger every morning. The Iraqi National Guard, trained by American forces and seemingly willing to take an active role in their country's rebirth. The Americans, um, they give it to the people more security and more freedom and more uh, democracy and a lot of jobs. And this is before it was nothing. We work as one team. And uh, our fate is one. Even with all the security that they have to go through to get on the base, these Iraqis are actually happy that the Americans are here. They now have jobs and have money that they can bring back to their families that they never had in the Saddam regime. We want in here, want a place very safe. No want a place danger. We no like explosion, no like bomb. <laughs> Everybody inside the Iraq very poor. No money. I no go in the school because the family very poor. I seek to work here, but the, the no work every day. While these young faces cling to hope, a violent minority seeks to destroy it. Two more mortar attacks today. This last one actually set off the red alert, so we had to scrap our chute, and now we're heading to a hardened bunker. It's been probably 10 days. I can't really remember. Um, sometimes we go a long time without having them, sometimes we have five or six in a day. Iraq has no future if its people can't defend themselves. Okay, stay online. Adjust the perimeter. You gotta adjust the perimeter. The job to train the new Iraqi military has fallen on the men and women of Task Force Chinook. When we first got here, I would have been very hesitant to go outside the wire missions with these guys. Uh, I do it all the time now. We live with them. We eat with them. We sleep with them to a certain degree. I trust them. If I didn't trust them, I wouldn't be here. Most of these Iraqi volunteers are farmers who show up only when they feel like it. 
He was in the middle, so he could have control of the assault element. That was good. But despite the lack of discipline, Sergeant Sean Clinch of Spokane sees potential and progress with every passing day. Uh, a lot of us probably want to go home, and a lot of Americans would like to see their soldiers home, but that's only going to happen if, if the Iraqi security forces can step up the plate and do the job. So being a part of that mission, that's the most important mission we have here in the country. I'm very proud to be a part of that. Well, while they are getting better, U.S. officers readily admit it will be years before they can thoroughly train enough Iraqis to warrant a major pullout of American forces. Now, tomorrow we're going to take you inside the simulation of a dramatic convoy attack as a young Gig Harbor High School graduate prepares to lead her squadron all the way across the war-torn country. And as always, you can see all of our reports, blogs, pictures, and holiday greetings from the troops on King5.com. Pat, I gotta ask you, mm -hmm. when you and KJ went to eat at the DFAC, the dining facility at Camp Anaconda, were you given any sort of warning about the potential target danger of such a facility? You know, they don't have to warn you because you really already know that the roofs of ours, they weren't tents, they were actually like shacks, and they know that if a mortar drops on the top of them, it's gonna come straight through. They're, they aren't hardened bunkers like some of the other buildings, so you're really taking your lives into your own hands every time you go there. As we saw today. Exactly. Thanks, Thank Pat. you, Pat.